everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Yeah, Frankie, <laughs> Frankie went and caught a couple of them Bethlehems, came back down there, doors open, told Daryl what time it was. He tried to get Daryl one of the Bethlehems, told him he had to, he, he was going to get at him. Daryl ain't want that one because he was, he was like, man, I ain't trying to stab no money. I ain't, I ain't, I'm, nah, you going to do something. You with me? You going to do something? You know, you what, what you with me? He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, give me something else or I don't want to stab nobody. So Frank give him... The lock in the sock. Take the lock, put a couple of padlocks, two or three padlocks in a couple of pair of socks, twist it up and tie it in a knot. Bloop, cluck somebody with that. You just might as well put the Bethlehem in it because if you hit them right in the head, because I've seen dudes in there get hit in the head with that junk and they out of there. You might crack his skull, you might fracture his skull, anything. So he wanted that. So, so Frank, tell him, oh, how you take that? And I'm telling you, you better do something. You better do something. When I make a move, you better do something. So he was like, I'm with you. I'm with you. So now Frank got the two Bethlehems. So Frank go out there just piling and walking around in the pod. That's why I told you things just pop off and you don't even know what's going on. In prison, man, you always got to be aware of your surroundings, man. I mean, like like nobody. That's why out here now, they always tell me, man, you always looking around. Yeah, I'm always looking around because you don't know where I've been and what I've seen. So, yeah, I'm always, you know, my head always on the swivel. Even out here, I just be always looking around in restaurants and in, 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 in stores. I'm just always doing it because that's what I'm used to, especially when I got a lot of movement around me. And it all comes from, like I say, things I've seen, things I've been through. So Frank go out there, everybody's mingling around in the block and everything because they don't let, the, you know, they don't open the doors for count. When count clear, they bust the doors, everybody come out. You know, microwaves, showers, phones, walking around, playing cards, sitting there. So now that's what I'm saying. This one dudes is playing <laughs> checkers and dudes is playing chess. See, they was playing checkers because they just want to run in on Frank and beat him up, put, put the miss on him. Nah, you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Not in prison. You know what I'm saying? You can do it, you know, and people have that false concept, but you don't know what might come behind it. Sometimes it may not be nothing to come behind it. Sometimes everything is coming behind it. So when you make a move and you get physical with somebody in prison, man, you got to do what you got to do because, like I say, you don't know what they're going to do to you. You don't know what, what the retaliation going to be, you know, if any. You know, you just don't know. So if you make a move, you got to make an emphatic move. So, man, um, Frank just walking around acting like he, you know, like everything is all right. You know, he stayed moving. I told you, he always hyper, man. It's like he just can't even stay still. So he walking around, but he got them, he got them sweats on and he got them two things. Him, them Bethlehems tucked up in that joint and everybody else moving around. And man, bruised all up and everything. This has just happened to him and they acting like it's all cool. Maybe they was on point, but I don't think they was on point enough. You know what I'm saying? So then the next thing you know, Boom. Frank just take, take pull them jumps out. When the first one get closer to him, I guess he wanted Bump first because Bump was the leader. So Frank pull the joint out and just roll up on him. Mop, mop, mop. Start hitting him. I mean, hitting him. He hitting him with the Bethlehem. So Bump turn around and boom, whoa, whoa. And he, they rumbling in there. And then Bump trying to run and get away because Frank, Frank ain't playing. He ain't trying to scratch you. Frank trying to put it in you. Mop. Map, so he running, he chasing him. So now the whole pod in chaos. So he hit bump a couple of times and bump slip and fall. He on top of bump, bang, bang, bang. So he leave bump then and start chasing the other dude that was with him. It's two other dudes that was with him. He chasing him, they running around, ain't nowhere to go. <laughs> ain't nowhere to go. He chasing him and trying to put it in him. He end up catching him, mock him, mock him, mock him. He hitting him, he hollering and screaming. You know what I'm saying? By now, the people in the booth know what's going on because it's pure chaos in there. So he hitting this dude, but back up. Bump laid down there, bump bleeding and everything. So now, Daryl part come in effect. Everybody Frank hit, when Frank hit him, Daryl run up behind him and cluck him three, four, five times with the lock in the sock. Mom, 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 mom. So now he done got hit with the Bethlehem and he getting beat with a lock in the sock. So... <laughs> Just, 
You can imagine what he was going through. So now Frank got the other one over in the corner. He done hit him a couple of times. Now he's looking around, looking for the other dude. He done ran upstairs. Frank done ran upstairs chasing him. Daryl leave him, come over there and cluck him a couple of times. Lock him, back him, back him, back him. Now they chasing the third one and trying to catch him. They, they He up on the top tier. He get ready to jump over. But when he get ready to jump over, Daryl run down there. So now he's stuck. He don't know whether to jump down or stay up there. So Frank run down on him. Ma! Hit him one time. He just, I guess he said he'd rather take the lock. So he get hit one time. He jump over the rail, hit the ground. Daryl on top of him. Mack him, mack him, mack him. Police come running in, man. Oh, hey, everybody get to your cell. Get to your cell. They coming in there about 20, 30 deep, then 40, then 50 because they ain't used to this. You know what I'm saying? They like, what? You know what I'm saying? The lady in the booth was probably hysterical. She don't like, what is going on in here? People running around. They trying to get out the way because, you know, it's, it's going down now. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of dudes in prison, we young. We young at this time. A lot of people that's in there is young. They ain't never seen nothing like this before. So they don't know what's going on. They thinking about a situation a couple of weeks ago with me over here. Now they seeing this. And I know in a lot of people's mind, they saying, oh, yeah, yeah, just putting attention. And a lot of dudes, young dudes, probably saying to themselves, man, what I done got myself into? Because when you start seeing that type of stuff and then you realize yeah, this this prison, this this is what we heard about. This is what we you know was told about when we was young, because that's how I felt when I was in the wall. You know what I'm saying? That's how I felt when I started seeing when I seen that dude, you know, just chop that dude up like that, and everybody is just moving around like you know what I'm saying. They was used to. You see, what I'm saying we green up in here in this in this Augusta. Most of us is green. They sending all the young dudes there that's just coming to prison. They got all this time because it's a new prison. And dudes are seeing this stuff for the first time and they just mind boggled. And I know a lot of dudes that changed their perception of how prison was, changed their direction of what they was going to do in prison and everything. Some for the better, some for the worse. You know, because, you know, when you see stuff like that and you ain't never seen it before, just, just be right there with it. Not on no TV, not watching, you no, know, seeing it right there live in action and dudes getting beat with uh, locks in the sock and getting the Bethlehem shoved up in them. And you see blood everywhere and you see police running in and chaos going on. You like, man, what in the world? Or where am I at? Because you can't get away. You can't get away. There's nowhere you can go. And then if you like me, I look at situations like that when I see them and I always put myself in that situation. I'm like, man, you know what I'm saying? So you have to have a game plan. You have to stay ready so you don't have to get ready because, see, obviously they won't even ready. You know what I'm saying? They done put hands on the man and they thought it was all sweet. They thought it was all over, but it won't over. It was just the beginning. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, man, they was tearing them up in there. I mean, they, they gave them the business in there, man. They gave them the business. Police come in there, you know, get everybody locked up, get the dudes out, man. Lock Frank up, lock Daryl up, you know, uh, get the situation under control. And them dudes got helicoptered out of there, man. They had to go to medical, all of them, you know, all of them. And they had serious injuries. They had so bad of injuries, and the prison was so new, it actually was on the news that night. It was on the news that night up there in Augusta. On the 11 o'clock news, you know what I'm saying, inmates get stabbed and beat with uh with, with weapons on the guts of prison. It was on it made the news, you know what I'm saying? So again, they locked the whole compound down. You see what I'm saying? So I didn't did this foolishness I had to do with Big Raymond a couple of weeks ago. Now they go back on lock with this right here. And now the whole situation is now the, all the attention is on Augusta because, like I say, Augusta is having all this now new uh, outbreak of violence. So they like they don't know what's going on. They trying to get control of the compound because they don't want other people to take and follow suit and start doing the same thing. Because, like I say, the prison was in its inception. It's new. And a lot of the officers, they didn't even know how to deal with this type of stuff because they never seen it before. A lot of them, this is their first time working in prison. So they working in prison now, their first time. A lot of them changed their mind. <laughs> a lot of them might say, this ain't the job I want. I don't want nothing to do with this. You see what I'm saying? So you had all types of uh, dynamics going on. And the crazy part about it is, I'm laid back there in the hole, you know what I'm saying? So I'm back there. I can only hear about situations. But the reason why I get the whole story about what's going on is because they bring them back there in the hole. I'm already in the hole. Man, they put Daryl right beside me. 
I'm in this cell. Daryl is in this cell. Frank is all the way over there in the corner. But they, they come right back there with where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So Daryl ended up being right beside me. And me and Daryl had never really chopped it up that much. Like I said, I always looked at him. He was younger than me. I looked at him like a little little kid, man, that always liked to joke and play. And at that time, I'm in the penitentiary. I went on no joking and playing time. You know what I'm saying? So, but by him ended up being in the cell right beside me, man, you know, we ended up being, we ended up being back there in the hole for a minute. All three of us for a minute. You know, so me and him, we really got to know each other even better, you know, right beside each other. When you in the hole, you know what I'm saying, all type of stuff going on, man. You be hollering through the door to talk because you so bored back there and you ain't got nothing to do. And as time go on and time go on, you get even more bored, man. And, um, man, we used to sit at the bottom of the door sometime and kick it. I holler at Frank, but you got to be yelling when you holler at Frank. He hollering at me, woo, woo, woo. But Daryl ended up giving me the whole story, blow for blow, or exactly what happened. You know what I'm saying? Them dudes end up getting street charges, had to go to court and everything. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just how it's going to go down. But at the same time, the point was made. You know what I'm saying? The point was made that Frank wanted to make. That, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're not going to do nothing to me and it ain't going to be no retribution. You know what I'm saying? So that carried a long way. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how much more time you do, people going to remember that and they're going to know that about dealing with you. Oh, yeah, well, you remember when Frank uh, uh, put that work in on Augusta, man, with them dudes? Woo, woo, woo. So it, it's going to go down like that. So that's why I say you're going to pay for it, though. Don't think that you can go in the penitentiary and you can, okay, well, I can just go in there and just set an example. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that to make sure don't nobody buy. Oh, yeah, you can do it. You know what I'm saying? But it's a whole lot that's going to come with it, too, because you're going to get dragged like we got dragged. You're going to be in that hole for all that time. You're going to be... Going through it, you ain't got nothing to eat. You got, you ain't gonna be able to call your people. You ain't gonna be able to get them visits like that. You just, you know what I'm saying. You gonna be going through. You gonna be starving because you can't eat nothing but the, uh, but the, um, the, the trays that they bring you. Back at this time, right, you couldn't get no commissary in in the hole. None of that. All the commissary you got is in property. By the time you do get out, when you stay back there a long time, like we end up doing, food ain't no good anyway. It's stale, hard as bricks. Or either the, the mice or the rats then got to it, you know, because they got all of them. They got mice on every compound, so they done ate through the boxes and ate all your food. Anything you open got holes in it because the mice then got to it. So you're going to go through some stuff, and then you're going to have to be mentally tough to be back there in the hole, in a room, by yourself, with nothing but a bed and a toilet, and to be able to, you know, keep your mental straight. You know, because you will feel like you're losing your mind back there. You will feel like you're on an island with nobody but yourself. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's crazy. It's some crazy stuff. You're going to have to go through psychological, mental, physical, everything. So it ain't like it's, you know, you're going to get away. And then, like I say, it's a lose-lose. It's always a lose-lose. Now, also, you got to look at the dynamic. Is you got enemies. You know, you got enemies for the rest of your, your time locked up because you don't know... When you might run into them again, and they always say when you have a valid incident like that against somebody, they going to put you on the keep separate list where you don't post or never be around that person no more. But I done seen that too. That'll slip up. You could put the Bethlehem in somebody now, and six years from now, you can be walking in the compound, walking in the, out on the yard, and the dude out there. And he might see you before you see him. Then you got a whole other situation, depending on how he want to carry it or what he want to do. You see what I'm saying? So you can't trust that. Like I say, you can only trust yourself. You can only be, you know, uh, uh, responsible for yourself. You can't be, you know, look at the administration going to take care of you. The administration going to make, man, if the administration was doing all of that, dudes wouldn't be getting chopped up. You know what I'm saying? So you can't rely on none of that. So now I can say it's a lot that goes along with it. And then you got enemies. Then you don't know who cool with them. You don't know who their family is. You don't know if they got family in the system. You don't know none of that. So let's just say you come out of, out of the hole and they ship you to another compound. You go to another compound and all of a sudden you run into uh, old boy cousin. You know what I'm saying? You run into old boy brother. You, you know what I'm saying? And then, oh yeah, that's the one. Oh, that's him. And you don't even know. You, you don't even know that that's his people. You don't even know that that's his family. You don't even know that that's his homeboy. But at the same time, you got to know these things or you got to be prepared for these things. So when you do make a move like that, you got to realize there's a whole lot to come with it, man. But then sometimes you're going to be forced to make a move like that because that may be your only play. Because like I say, if not, then it's going to all come back to you anyway. You're going to deal with more more problems and more problems and more problems. 
If Frank wouldn't have handled that business the way he chose to handle that business, he might as well have not ran a soul box for the rest of his bit. He might as well have not barked on nobody for the rest of his bit. Might have, none of that because ain't nobody going to respect him. You see what I'm saying? Wouldn't nobody have respect him if he had let that slide. You see what I'm saying? But... Man, them dudes got they got they got hurt real bad, man. I mean, real bad. A lot of them, a couple of them stayed in the hospital for a long time. I ended up running into two more of them dudes down the line. Two more of them, man, and um, different, you know, uh, different um scenarios for both of them, man. But it was crazy. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I actually ran into really all of them again. You know what I'm saying? Uh. The one I was around the most again was Frank, but later on, I you know I you already know I ended up on Mecklenburg. Uh -huh. <laughs> Daryl ended up on Mecklenburg with me. You know he was on there with me for a couple of years. He ended up leaving before I did. I don't know where he went to, and um, I never ran into him again. Um, I ran into Bump on um, Power Tan, right? And I told y'all, Bump was a real big dude. He was he was a real big dude. He was short, but he was he was big. He stayed on the way pal. When I ran into Bump, man, again, man, it was it was uh it was it was sad, man. He was real real small, man. He was real small. I mean, Bump was probably like he was probably like 110, 115 pounds, man. He looked so sad and weak, and um I didn't know what what had happened to him or what what was wrong with him, but we ended up in the same block. And um, he was telling me what had happened to him, which was um, really a, that's a that's a whole nother story, man. But it was just sad because he had, and they usually don't do this to, to my understanding. No, they don't do it the other way. This is how this is how vicious, you know, prison is. Bump mother had got sick, and um, she needed a kidney, and she couldn't find a match for a kidney. And Bump volunteered to give her the kidney. And he uh they set it up and got it done. And he ended up, you know, going ahead of surgery and gave her his kidney. And she, you know, got better. Bump other kidney ended up failing on him. And he ended up, you know, getting bad off, real bad off. That's why he had lost all the weight. He was real sick. Now he was turning around and trying to find a kidney. I don't know what ever happened because I ended up, you know, leaving up all the compound with him. But I do know he was real, real sickly, man. And that was just, that's just a crazy turn of events. He turned around and saved, you know, his mom's life. And now he needed somebody to save his life. That was just crazy, man. I, I just felt so sad for him just because of the fact that I knew him. And it was just so crazy when I tell you how vicious prison is because if you in prison... And you need that type of transplant. They're not going to let nobody from this, from outside give you that. His mother, if it, the situation was reversed or right now, like when he needed a kidney, his brother or nobody else could not even give him a kidney because he in prison. But yet they would let you give an organ to somebody on the outside. I know that's how it was then. I don't know if it's still that same way now, but that, that I, I just thought that was just insane. You know, that's just how much they devalue your life when you're in prison. The man could not even receive a kidney when he had gave away a kidney. And it just so happened as, you know, as, as luck would have it, then his kidney that he had, his remain it failed him. You know, so it, it was crazy, man. And then, like I say, I ran into uh, Frank again on uh, on Greensville. And, and, you know, we had some we had some adventures on there, man. Because, like I say, me and Frank was always cool anyway, but Frank just... He's a wild one, man. When I tell y'all Frank Nitty is a wild one, when I tell you, boy, I mean a wild one. Um, like I told y'all, he always get at the girls, man. He always try to holler at the girl. And um, <laughs> I can remember I ran back into him on Greensville. He had been on, um, I think he had been on Sussex 1. And he ended up uh, meeting a, a girl in the kitchen, worked in the kitchen, meeting one of the kitchen supervisors or whatever, whatever. And they, you know, they got together or whatever. She ended up quitting and he married, right? So Frank was married to a former kitchen supervisor now, right? Uh, if I remember correctly, I think she was like a Hispanic, maybe Puerto Rican or something, but she was a Hispanic uh, uh, woman. And she used to be in the visiting room, come and see him when I used to be in the visiting room. 
So, you know, Frank used to be in there just like I told y'all. He all hyper and stuff like that, man. Frank used to be in there all hyper, talking to her, going crazy if she will not doing what he said or he wanted to know what she was doing. And, I mean, he just used to be going at it, man. I mean, this dude, you have to see him to, to fully understand what I'm talking about. Anybody who know him who's watching this video... They know who Frank is and they know what I'm talking about, man. This dude just stayed hyper, man. And I'm talking about he had no cut card. He was just off the chain, even with, 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 his, with his wife. I can remember him being in that visiting room with his wife one time. This is one of the craziest things I've seen, which I've seen a lot in the visiting room. So say this is one of the craziest things I've seen. Uh, uh, it says a lot. But I remember him and his wife was arguing. Because, you know, I don't know whether he, you know, she was supposed to do something. You know what I'm saying? That she did not do. And Frank in there arguing with her. And I'm sitting like a row away from him. But I can see him. And, he, you know, and I know his voice. So I can, I'm in tune. I can hear what he's saying more or less. And, man, he just arguing and telling her how she shouldn't have did this. And how she's stupid. And she's dumb and everything. And she barking back at him. And, you know, and then she said something to the effect of, well, you know, you my husband. You my husband. You you supposed to understand this, that, and the third. You supposed to understand. And Frank was more or less like, your husband. Your husband. But you can't do what I asked you to do. You can't do that. You tell me your husband. You think that means anything to me? If you not doing what I asked you to do. Man, what, what does that mean? Because we married? Because I got this on my finger? Man, Frank pulled the ring off his finger and put it in his mouth and swallowed it. Frank swallowed it. Ring in the he said, This is how much this means to me, and when you don't listen to me, this is what it means to me. That's what it means to me. Now, ah, it's gone. You understand? Yeah, that. And man, the girl got so mad, she was crying. And why'd you do that? Why you do that? You crazy? Why? And she just got up and left about there. And Frank got up and said, I'm right, going get up out here then, B. Get up out here. Don't come back until you got your stuff together. And, and she rolled out, Frank rolled out. I'm like, man, Frank is off the chain up in this joint. Man, the people was coming over there telling them to calm down, calm down. They take him up out of there. The girl leave up out of there crying and everything, man. It was just wild, man. This is Frank Nitty. This is how Frank Nitty be coming, man. Frank Nitty is, is <laughs> he's a one-on-one, -one, man. He's a one-on-one. -one. He's one of a kind, man. The dude is just, uh, yeah, yeah, super hyper, man. Super hyper. But the crazy part about it is, then he was on the compound with me, so I can remember I was going somewhere one day. Uh, I can't remember exactly where I was going, but I ran into the other dude, one of the other dudes that he put that Bethlehem in, the tall, slim dude, man. And he was always a quiet dude, too, but he just got caught up in the situation. Like I say, when you with somebody else, you got to be with somebody else. And he was with Bump them. So he ended up, you know, he rolled with Bump them, went in there, put them hands on Frank, and he ended up having to get what Bump got. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, he won't built like that. I don't really think Daryl was built like that. But you ain't got no choice. You know what I'm saying? You you have no choice because you align yourself with these people. You see what I'm saying? That comes back from what they always tell you, you know, birds of a feather stick together, or whatever, or your parents always tell you when you out here on the street. Don't be hanging around with the bad crowd, though, because you won't you, you won't be in line with them. You know what I'm saying? You won't be in line with them. And if somebody trying to get at them, they're going to try to get at you. So when somebody try to get at them and they, they move back, you're going to have to move like they move. So I remember seeing him, man. He was in a class, too. He was coming back with books and everything, and he spoke to me. So when he spoke to me, I was like, man, yeah, um, boom, 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 yeah, you was on. And he was like, yeah, yeah, you don't remember me? Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, woo, woo, woo. So I'm like, man, how you been doing? Da, 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 da. We exchange whatever, talk whatever. He go on about his business. And this is, this is years later, man. So um, then I ran into Frank out on the yard that day. And when I run into Frank, that's the first thing I said to him. Because, you know, Frank, Frank, my dude, I mess with him. You know what I'm saying? So I asked Frank. I said, look, bro, you know, um, you know, old boy from back in the day when the stuff happened on the gut I said, you know, one of them dudes here, right? You know what I'm saying? Because we on the same compound. Goes back to what I told you. You supposed to be on keep separate. Administration don't care nothing about that. They make, they, they fumble. They fumble. You know what I'm saying? So I tell Frank, and I'm thinking I'm really dropping some news on him just to put him on game so he can be prepared, you know, stay ready. And Frank like, oh, oh, yeah, 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 I seen him, I seen him, I already seen him. You know I'm on top of that. I seen him as soon as he got over. He got over here about, about two or three weeks ago. 
I seen him. I already pulled straight up on him. I asked him, you know, what it is. I mean, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like you know, he said, man, that's over. He, he didn't want to be involved in it from the beginning. He just got caught up. He's sorry. He ain't no beef. Woo, woo, woo. And Frank, like, Frank was like, yeah, because I, yeah, I was ready to give it to him. I want him to sneak up on me. I'm ready to give it to him again. You know what I'm saying? But he said it's dead. I said, wow. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't put the joint in him. And I'm like, how that's going to be dead? They ain't going to never be dead with me unless you dead. You know what I'm saying? That's me. You know, you put that Bethlehem in me. It, nah, it ain't gonna never be dead. I don't care if it's 50 years later. If I see you, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? But I guess different strokes for different folks. Frank said that he talked to him face to face, looked him in his eye. He felt like he was sincere. He wasn't worried about him. I ain't, ain't tripping. I, you know, if he, if he do try to do something, I'm gonna be ready. You know what I'm saying? But I pulled up on him. I looked him right in his eye, bang, and I'm saying he, he don't want it. I know he don't want it. You know what I'm saying? I know he remember. He don't want it. You know what I'm saying? And he left it alone, you know what I'm saying? So that's that 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 was kind of crazy to me because, like I say, I just can't see that happening to me, and I can't see it happening to most people I know. You know, like I told y'all about my homeboy Big A. You know, if you go back and watch the story about Big A, and Big A did that, and the dude told him that, and then the dude snuck up on him, you know, later on, and almost took his life. So you know, you you can't trust that type of stuff. But Frank is own man. He made his own play. He felt like he was safe. He felt like he was good. And it was, because it ain't nothing never happened, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing never happened in um, the rest of the time we was there, as far as with him and that dude right there, man. So, yeah, man, Frank Frank was a wild one, boy. He he was not doing no games, and uh, he just he just was so hyper. And, man, I remember he had uh, started working out, man. He started playing basketball all the time, couldn't even really play. But he get on the court, and I remember seeing him on the court, and he's shooting that little ugly shot he got here. He, he jump up, but he's... Just shoot the ball with one hand, and he just get out there, man, and be them dudes be arguing with them little young boys and talking crazy stuff to them and saying stuff to them. And Frank used to be like, "Yeah, all right, okay, all right." And I be saying to myself, "Whoa, <laughs> they ain't got no idea who they playing with or what they playing with." Cause Frank will <laughs> take you up out of here, man. You know, but that's how it be. You don't know these people. And a lot of them young dudes, they come in and they look and they see a dude getting a little older or whatever, and they just think he just nobody. <laughs> you never know who's who in prison. You never know who's who, what they did, what they will do, or none of that. So, you know, like I say, but uh Frank, old Frank Nitty, man. That old Frank Nitty, boy, we we had we 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 had a lot of hate, you know what I'm saying, going on back that day and probably carried over, you know what I'm saying, because of what happened. I put the compound on lock, then he put the compound right back down on lock. And dudes will hate you for that. And it's crazy that they will because it ain't it ain't directly got nothing to do with them, but just the fact that they had to be behind that cell. And see, then you got to deal with the dynamic too of that. You know, they don't want you around them no more now. So now you got to look at the fact that even though they hate you or they got some type of undertone dislike for you, they now they also looking at you like, you know, you might be crazy or you might, you know what I'm saying, you'll do something to them one day or whatever. So dudes be, they be nervous, nervous. They don't want them type of cats around them. So if you do end up in a block with them or you end up on a compound with them or something like that, they're going to be bad mouthing you, you know, behind your back, whispering to other people or whatever. Or you get in a block and you, you know, in there with them. They might be waiting for you to do something wrong or doing something illegal. They're going to be the one that write the little secret note to get you up out of there. Because they don't want you around them. Either they don't want you to end up doing nothing again that's going to put them on lock, Or they don't want you around them where they end up in a situation where you might be putting that Bethlehem in them. They just get more so like standoffish and nervous about you. Whereas to that turn into some, some, some you know, some... Some low key hate man where they hating on you and you don't even know. You know what I'm saying? So you got to watch for all them dynamics in prison, man. It's just it's just a crazy, crazy environment, man, with just all types of craziness going on and all types of different scenarios where people is is thinking certain things in their mind and you don't even know what they thinking or why they thinking or why they doing what they doing. But when they see you do some type of violent stuff or something like that. And they ain't really built like that, or they, man, they don't get rid of you. I'm telling you, you get in their block and get doing something wrong, they gonna be the one to write the note on you, act like they ain't do it. They be right there talking to you like, oh yeah, somebody, somebody did, well, they trying to put you on the best case for what? You the one who wrote the note. That's how they be doing it. You don't even know. That's why I say friends in there, new associate is not recommended, man. Just, you know, mind your business and, and stick to who you stick to, man, because... 
you don't know who's who in there. You ain't going to never really know who's who, man. You just got to, you know, get in your own mind, man, and be to yourself, man, and just do your bit the way you see fit to do your bit that's going to keep you as safe as you feel like you can be. And I, you know, never fully trust no one but yourself. Because like I tell you, you the only one that's going to be able to save yourself in prison, man. But it's one thing you can always do this 100% safe from, from prison. Don't go. <laughs> do not go. Do not put yourself in a position, man, to be incarcerated, man, and be dealing with all of this foolishness that I be explaining on these videos that you're going to have to deal with because you're going to have to deal with it directly or indirectly. You're going to have to deal with it, you know. So, um, yeah, this was just one of these stories, man, I wanted to drop on y'all, man. The time that, man... We shut the compound down back to back. And um, there's a lot that came with that. And I wanted to let y'all know that because they dragged me. And I'm talking about they dragged me, you know, and they dragged them as well. You know what I'm saying? Things like that going to change the course of your bit, man. And you're going to have to be mentally tough as well as physically tough to, to be able to uh, come out of that stuff, man, and keep your sanity and keep your mind, you know, and it won't ease Trust me when I tell you it was not easy, man. I do not recommend it, and I do not recommend going to prison at all. Unless you're going in there to speak and to bring some type of uh, uh, hope in there and some type of encouragement. And um, something that I hope to do soon. But uh, other than that, man, going the other way? Nah, brother. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. You know, make some good decisions out here, man, and um, make it work out here. Uh TBP, man, I love y'all out there. I appreciate y'all out there. Y'all be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man. I hope y'all rock with this story. I'll be back at y'all in a minute. I'm um, thinking about doing a couple of reaction videos to, to, to some things I've seen that I might want to bring to y'all attention, man. But in the meantime, in between time, man, I appreciate the support. I appreciate the love. Y'all stay tuned out there. We got more to come. Interviews, conversations with convicts coming up. I'm going to get back on this cooking thing. I'm going to get ready to cook up some real pure deliciousness. I want y'all to go check it out. I got something in mind that I want to cook and share with y'all, man. So uh, y'all stay tuned, man. We on the move out here, TBP. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all, man. Duck that hook. Bow, bow, bow. Woo wee Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.